All right. Um, I guess we can. Uh, yeah, I started recording, so we can start. Start with the pledge. Everybody's present. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. Jesus, screwed up work in there. Sometimes I get my head. No members of the public. So um, I know it's probably going to be a shorter meeting. Uh, obviously, you guys saw the preliminary agenda last week. We had a personnel matter resolve itself. So, um, so here we are with this agenda. And any uh, any comments, Matt? Since you're remote, um, we'll give you the floor. Sure, I'll, I'll start. I just have one brief one. And uh, I learned this weekend that uh, Lynn Dallas, who uh, yeah. had served on our pension and benefits board uh, for many years, uh, passed away uh, unexpectedly this weekend. So, um, you know, just extending our thanks to her family um, for all the years of service that Lynn provided and our condolences. Yeah, um, Carol Manning emailed Leanne and I to let us know that. And, um, yeah, that I mean, I I think she was a reasonably young lady. Um, you know, certainly not well before her time. Um, and uh, just such a, you know, uh, Lynn was. Uh, for, uh, obviously, uh, on the Democratic side, um, she was a union rep, uh, I, I believe. Uh, she had something to do with union uh, um, work during her career. Uh, and even, even if we differed, not that we did, but Lynn was always uh, delightful to work with. She expressed her opinion. She was intelligent. Um, you know, I mean, the Pension and Benefits Board is a really great board to work on, but Lynn was just, uh, she would express her opinion, but always, just always very polite and um, very nice lady. So I was very sorry to hear that. Uh, um, so thanks for uh, bringing that up now. Um, Scott? I don't have any comments. No. So uh, I'll just say a few quick things here. Uh, so the annual town meeting is November 28th. As you guys both know, that's a meeting that is called by charter on the fourth Monday of November. So that meeting will be called uh, for 630 on November 28th. So Oh, wow. Our next meeting is November 8th. Um, all right. So at our next meeting, I will, geez, I mean, that's election day. Are you guys going to be available on election day to have a, maybe a quick meeting just to call the town meeting? I can do that. Even if we do it remotely, Matt, do you think? Yeah, that should be fair. Yeah. I mean, I know it's campaign day so you know so that would be a i'm just thinking because i'm going to be in baton rouge <laughs> um well, anyway we'll do an agenda for that day uh that is what an 8 30 meeting right uh so it's on november 8th yes um, so we will call a meeting uh that day, I'll try to keep it late. Um, I'm assuming I should be able to make it. I'm assuming so. We'll probably, you know, we maybe we all plan on being even remote, virtual, because possibly the only thing I possibly will be the call of the annual town meeting. Um, and just so you know, uh, on the annual town meeting, I've kind of been preparing a preliminary agenda. Sometimes we only have uh to act on and to receive and act upon the reports of the town officials as printed in the annual town report however uh 
because there are some things coming up for a vote, uh, I thought we would perhaps have a business meeting also. Uh, I have uh, seven items that I think we could have on that meeting. One of them is to uh, approve an appropriation in the amount of $5,106.38 for capital from the capital non recurring account for the purposes of upgrading the town's two digital signs. This was a request Larry Hayden made to the Board of Finance, and the Board of Finance approved that request. So that is something uh, that we would uh, act on uh at our next meeting and then refer to the annual town meeting the other one is i requested kind of um i don't know if i ran it by this board yet but we'll, we can discuss it at a meeting at the next meeting or this meeting um it looks like there's going to be about twenty thousand dollars worth of electrical work for the gazebo so that the gazebo is fully wired up and um can do information technology present, you know, presentations as people may want to do. Also, we want to add a bunch of circuits out there so that if bands want to plug in uh, and, and show a video, we're not going to blow anything. That there's going to be plenty of outlets, but also plenty of circuits. Uh, that's what Sal also explained to me. Uh, we're also going to add a few lighting bollards. Uh, as you go around the corner to the basketball court, it gets very dark there. So Ray requested, uh, I think, two bollards there that would be lit. And also, um, next spring, we do plan on putting a patio in front of the new gazebo. And we would run a sidewalk from the current sidewalk in front of Town Hall uh, to the patio. That way, everything is ADA accessible, and there would be two bollards on that little runway that would go from the sidewalk to the patio. Um, and uh, another one is uh, to stain the fence at Whisper Cove. This is something Brad Thorpe brought up at a Board of Selectmen meeting, saying that the Whisper Cove fence probably should be stained. It would add to the light. So they, uh, the gentleman agreed to stain it. He said it would probably cost $4,000 to do it. So I did receive a $4,000 appropriation from the Board of Finance. So we would act on that. Um, then there are several other requests that are actually on our agenda today. Um, and I, as I explained at our last meeting, uh, for the steep grant, we need to appropriate the funds and then receive reimbursement. What we're not sure about is the legislative earmarks. So I thought we would go to town meeting on all of that, uh, knowing that it'll either be pre-funded or reimbursable. That way our housekeeping is done. We don't have to worry about it. We can just push forward with the work next year and not have to call a town meeting for it. Um, lastly, the other item is I think today at the uh, uh, ARPA meeting, they're going to recommend to the Board of Selectmen a whole host of recommendations that we act upon at our next meeting. So that actually will be a meeting that we're going to have some business. Uh, but the, presumably, since you guys have both attended all these ARPA meetings, unless we have some major discussion, uh, and you can let me know maybe in advance today uh, at the ARPA meeting or now uh, with the recommendations that ARPA is coming, the ARPA committee is coming up with. All those recommendations would be on our November 8th meeting to recommend to the annual town meeting. So does anybody, any questions on that, Matt? Do you have any questions on that, Scott? No, it's a lot of that stuff that Bruce sent out today, so I'm aware that yeah. Talking about, yeah. Does that make sense to you guys? Do you, do you have any ob objection to moving the town meeting? No, can be, it can be a business meeting. There's no, there's nothing that says it can't be a business meeting. Um, sometimes I try to keep it lighter, but we do have some things that should go to town meeting, and um, if we can do them now, why not do them? Yeah, I think that that makes sense. Okay. 
So I'm preparing that agenda uh, for, uh, agenda for the annual town meeting. Uh, I will also prepare an agenda for the November 8th meeting and get that out as soon as possible. Um, probably next week, uh, I'll let Georgia and start working on that. So that's that. Um, I think I hey, mentioned- Carl, just while we're on yeah. meetings, I'm planning to be out of town on uh, the Tuesday, the 22nd, when we have a four o'clock meeting scheduled in November. Okay. All right. Out of town, so you won't join or? Out of town and not sure what the service will be, um, okay. where I'm going to be. All right. No worries. We'll see what transpires, uh, if anything. How's that? We'll just leave it at that. But thanks for letting me know. Um, yeah, I yeah that eight thirty meeting could be interesting for me because I'm going to be an hour behind and I don't know what my schedule is going to be. So um, in any event, um, just a couple of quick updates. Uh, I think I mentioned to you guys that when Larry was digging for a water main at the transfer station, he came across some pollution. I don't know. Um, this is several months ago. So we've had uh, somebody out there put in some monitoring wells. As it turns out, it was in a gas tank that was taken out of the ground 20 years ago. Uh, and apparently they didn't button it up the way they should have. Um, and Larry started digging because he's putting in a water main and he immediately detected the smell of gas. So he immediately called our town engineers, who then called DEP, and we got somebody out of site. They did monitoring wells. They figured out what needed to be done. They have a proposed plan. As it turns out, some soil needs to be removed. New soil needs to be brought in. Uh, some wells need to remain in place. Uh, the entirety of the I think we're getting away lucky because the pollution looks very contained. It doesn't look like it's gone to the aquifer over there, um, which is a blessing. And I think the entirety of the cost is going to be uh, 10,000, about 30, about 30 grand all in, I believe, about 30 grand all in. Um, so, um, a fair portion of that is being paid for from the contingency account. Um, I think that's a fair use of that fund. Uh, I'll just say this much. It could have been a couple hundred thousand, um, if things didn't go our way. So I wasn't sure if I mentioned that. I did mention it at a board of finance meeting several weeks ago. Um, if you guys, Matt, if you have any questions, just jump in. Um, I won't look for a hand. No, um, I'm good. I'm good. Uh, electricity pricing, as you guys know, uh, electricity has gone through the roof. Um, we're currently paying about nine cents. We're on a three-year contract that expires at the end of November. Um, we did through our broker, which is a CCM uh, affiliated broker, we have done a, we, we've conducted a bid and we got really lousy bids uh, between December and February. So for December, January, and February, we don't have a contract and we're just gonna pay the Eversource rate uh, but then we were able to get into a short-term contract at 11 cents. So not too bad. Uh, and that contract, I think, goes maybe February or March to November of next year. In the meantime, if there's any relief in the markets, we'll do another couple auctions. Our broker constantly monitors the market, and it'll just buy us some time to look at um, what our next contract might be. Uh, I don't do this stuff on my own anymore. It's too complicated to market. Um, it was great when electricity was seven and eight cents. It just isn't anymore. So um, 
The gazebo uh, is going to be delivered. It'll probably get built in one day. Uh, as you can see, Larry did the pad out there. You're gonna see some other stuff being done out there, some digging because we're gonna run some conduit, obviously, uh, uh, so that we can put in, oh. <laughs> Oh, I thought you were just going to take this remotely. Oh, uh, we're going to be putting in some conduit. Um, and uh, so the, the gazebo is going to go in the first week of November. Um, and I talked to the guy the other day, first or second week. Obviously, there's no rush at this point. The rush was to make sure Larry got the pad done. Uh, so uh, that'll go up very shortly. <clears throat> the other thing you see you'll see his crew, Larry's crew working on right now, is over at the Cape. <clears throat> it actually is kind of complicated back there in terms of we had Jeff Jacobson's office do a survey because you have the new restaurant, the Japanese restaurant, you have the financial advisor, <clears throat> and then you have town land and they all kind of come together. So we did a survey and we shared the survey with all three property owners. So everybody knows where they can go. And the Kate was able to get, is getting a new chiller because that chiller is shot and apparently not cooling the building very well. It's about $120,000, but they did it through NAA grants. Uh, so they did it through, you know, they got corporate, those corporate donations, corporate tax returns. Um, so, which is great. The Kate's going to, and Larry is preparing the pad <clears throat> for the chiller. And they're also going to have some, a storage unit out there. They need storage. And so they cleared that with Chris Costa and everything. And, uh, you know, the Kate has just come a long way. It, you know, I don't know if you guys know, but it was a mess after it was built. It was blood, sweat, and tears to get it built. But everything about it was wrong when it got built. They turn on the heat in one office and then would heat upstairs and opposite side of the building. I mean, it was like it was a mess. And it, there, there was a dispute with the contractor, whatever. Um, and there's just been so much work done there. Um, and it, it's just performing at a very top level as a building. Um, they've gotten many, many grants. Obviously, I thank both of you and prior boards of selectmen because we've invested a lot of money in the Cape. Um, and I really think every dime we put into it is worth it. It's just an amazing treasure and asset on Main Street. But they are now uh, getting a new chiller and putting in a storage unit. Uh, and you'll see that happening as you come in that side driveway over there. Uh, one of the other last things I'll talk about is when we got the lights approval at the high school, there were some conditions that went along with it. And one of those was to stop people from parking on Ingham Hill Road uh, so that we could be good neighbors to those folks. Well, we put in a fence, we put in a Merritt Parkway style fence, very attractive, so that no one can park on the side of the road. The next thing we have to do is build a screen. So if you drive by there, you'll see that we had 30, I think they all got delivered today, 33 arbor bikes. Okay. So there's gonna be a wall of plants over there. And the whole idea is to screen for the neighbors and make sure no one parks over there and it's not a hangout spot. So uh, out of that entire project and all the excitement that we've had for the last year or so, one of the biggest and first complaints I had was that was the fact that I can't illegally park any longer along the hill because they put the, our, the, 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 the fence up there. I had an email from <laughs> someone I know pretty well saying, um, my father who is older, and doesn't get around very well. That was one of the few spots that he could watch his granddaughter play because there's not good handicapped parking and it's too far for him to walk. And he could watch the games from there. Where do you now want me to have my father watch the games? 
So I think, and that was sent to Jane and Julie too, and they worked on a handicap smart. And there, the athletics director has determined that they're going to shuttle people. Yeah, uh, so shuttle people. Right. I saw them do that with Mike Cronin and Pat Cronin. I feel so. No, you know, when we have Monument Way, there are going to be parking spots right there that are very accessible. Okay. But they also don't want them, so whatever they're going to so, do. Uh, one thing that I promised Chris Casa, because there's plenty of town, the town gets approvals and the town doesn't necessarily play by the rules. And she said that has historically been the case. I told her we will make good on all our conditions. Uh, the schools changed a lot of their lighting. I don't know if you were aware of that, to dark sky lighting, mm -hmm. so that it's down. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they changed a lot of their lighting on their building to make it compliant. Mm -hmm. um, we have to put in another like 15 trees on Route One to be compliant. Yeah, Route One, like a lot by McDonald's, by three yeah, McDonald's, that, and we're pulling. So you can't see them on the road there. And and that is just in the town's regulation, and it was part of the conditions. And so we are going to do it. Uh, I only plant trees in the fall, so uh, those trees aren't going to get planted for another year, but they'll get done. Um, but there's going to be a lot of arborvitaes, and they're already pretty big. They're, these are like eight footers that we bought. So that is going to be a complete wall over there of arborvitaes. Um, and that's that was its only condition uh, of getting this done. So, so are they arbor like are they regular arborvitaes, or are they something? Because I know that the deer will eat the. I don't know the lower part of the arbor vitae. They might doesn't do lead to a very attractive <laughs> food green screen. Uh. Yeah, I uh, you know there, that did come up. I don't know if these are deer. I'm not sure. Okay, I'm not sure. Uh, and also, just as a side note, we also planted 11 trees over the course of the last week, where I took some trees down. Um, so um, I try to. Put trees in the ground where trees have come down and uh you know i don't think we make as big a deal about that but i planted uh four elms and six six maples and a dogwood so um and let me tell you it's not easy to get people you know when i run around town yeah with the dog or whatever i i look for areas where there's a run where there's no wires above and it's open space. And, um, you know, people don't often, it's remarkable, people don't necessarily want trees and they definitely don't want oak trees. And Kathy Connolly emailed me and she said, why aren't we planting any white oaks? And I'm like, of all the trees people will accept, they don't want oaks, which may be a bad thing, but um, they are receptive to elms and um, maples. Anyway. Blah, blah, blah. Great. Um, I mean, we certainly take down plenty of trees every year, but uh, good to get them in the ground. It's expensive. It's an expensive proposition to do both. Um, approval of the minutes from October 11, 2022. Is there a motion? I'll make that motion. Second. Second. Any comments, corrections? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. So, um, so I thought I'd just put all these, <laughs> thought I'd put all these grants before us and just get this done. Mm -hmm. All right. So I'm going to make a motion that we approve uh, a $500,000 appropriation and recommend that the Board of Finance make a, a $500,000 appropriation to the Board of Finance and that they uh, appropriate said funds uh, and move it to town meeting, uh, said funds to be reimbursed for the town. And these funds are for part of the project at, uh, for, for sidewalks from Old Post Road to the Westbrook town line. So I'll make the motion for con uh, discussion purposes. Sure, yeah. second. Okay, second by Scott. So any question on that reimbursable grant, not a pre-funded grant, um, the lots of grant that we did North Main Street with was a pre-funded grant. Typically, I, I haven't gone to town meeting. Uh, we don't get a lot of those, 
Uh, but I, I haven't gone to town meeting on those. Um, and I think the connectivity grants are pre-funded grants also. Um, once you have a bid, the state just shows up in your account. It's a beautiful thing. It doesn't always happen. So uh, on all these other grants. As I so any questions on this? I mean, pretty straightforward. I mean, Steve Grants. All right, hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 And then the legislative earmarks. If I, had, if I was a bet man, I'll, I'll leave it up to the board. I don't care. If I was a bet man, I'd say they're going to be pre funded, but they told me they're not sure what they're going to do. You guys have a preference? I mean, there's no harm in having it go to town meeting. So, so when you say, when, one way or another, we're getting reimbursed. One way or another, right? So well, one way or another, it's either going to be show up in our account before we do the work, or show up in our account after we do the work. Right. <laughs> so the only thing that we're, we want to do is make sure the money is available when it's needed. The only thing I want to do is make sure that if if these legislative earmarks end up being reimbursable, we're going to have to go to a town meeting at some point down the road. So I'm thinking. Why not just get it done? It's in the, you know, it'll be done forever. If it gets pre-funded, we may have done something we didn't need to do, but there's no harm, no foul either. There's no harm in getting approval at the town meeting. Yeah, I don't think that there's a problem getting approval. And I think actually when you talk about both projects in front of the group, well, that's it'll, the other it'll thing. be less confusing that's than if you're calling a meeting. A month later. That's, and that's the other advantage is you go to town meeting and you explain it. The Harvard News will probably cover it. Yep. The people will understand it, what the money's for. So, all right. So with that, um, I will make a motion that uh, it's another, there's a $500,000 earmark uh, that the that we recommend to the Board of Finance that they approve a uh, $500,000, $500, $500,000 for a project that is entitled Main Street Connection Park Phase Two, um, which will involve um, a lot of site work, sidewalk, uh, and some other improvements. Um, and that is the phase two behind the pickleball courts. Any questions on that? That's a motion, by the way. I'll second the motion. Um, <laughs> so this is the earmark that we received in March. Yeah, this was the older, yeah, the older one. That nothing. Yeah. I have right. no authority to do anything on it. Um, I don't know what to do. I really don't know what to do with it. But anyway, that's 500,000. Any questions on that? All those in favor, so you can have it saying aye. All right. And then the last one is that the board of selectmen recommend to the Board of Finance an appropriation in the amount of $769,500, um, which is which was awarded to the town as grant in aid funding through the state of Connecticut DEP for a sidewalk project um, to assist in building sidewalks from Old Post Road to the Westbrook Town Line, in conjunction with a steep grant um and that that ultimately be moved to town meeting um is there a second with that second so that project uh all in is seven hundred seventy thousand plus five hundred thousand plus a town match of about three hundred forty thousand well, hopefully that will be enough um again there's no authority to move forward on any of this right now um it's so I saw the governor, he was at Saber Point Inn last Friday for a tourism conference. He came down, Stefanowski came down two months ago. Governor promised to come down. It was the day of the Bristol funeral for the officers. And it's funny because the governor is, um, he can come across as kind of a, a goofy guy, you know what I mean? Um, but he was definitely more somber. Um, after attending those funerals, you can only imagine. I can't even imagine. Uh, it was nice. I met his wife. I had met his wife before, even though she was at the Kate that night uh, for the gala. Um, but the governor was there, and you know, he saw me. I was with Norm Needleman, and 
So he was talking to us and he said, how's it going down here? You know, things getting done. I said, yeah, you know, you've been, you know, the state is, we appreciate your support of Old Saybrook with various grants. I said, I have, I said, I don't want this to sound like a complaint. I said, but it's been very difficult getting authorization to move forward on some of these projects. And I, I was just like, look, you got a lot on your plate right now in the middle of an election. He said, it's not a complaint. He goes, well, yes, it is a complaint. And I said, it's not. I'm just saying maybe when things, when everything, the dust settles, um, that is something that all of us can work on is because it can't be just old saber. Yeah, there were all there were pages and pages of legislative earmarks. There have to be other towns that are struggling with moving forward. And you can't move forward without um uh an agreement with the state. In fact, when you get the award, it basically says you are not to spend any money or commence any work until you have authority to do so. I have all my contacts that I'm emailing. I'm trying, you know, I don't want to, I'm not trying to ruffle any feathers necessarily either, but I am doing some gentle contact with these people, but I'm, uh, which I'll probably do again on November 1st kind of been my 30 day tickler. So anyway, I'm just rambling on at this point. Um, so anyway, it's been moved and seconded. Uh, I'll take these to the Board of Finance for next Tuesday. Um, they do not have to come out of the capital non-recurring account. Um, it'll just come from our reserves and they get put back into reserves. Uh, what we didn't vote, yeah, I know. Okay. All those papers, <laughs> all right. Uh, just one other. Oh, we'll do one more thing. Um, down the leak, uh, would like to be reappointed to the Conservation Commission two year term due to expire. I think Donna's an unaffiliated voter, she's also on ARB. Um, so I'll move Donna Leakes. Do you know Donna? Anybody? She's nice. You know, she's a former, I think, principal or superintendent. Um, and she still works a little bit, but she likes serving on these committees and commissions. Good attendance. So she shows up, which is important. So uh, is there a second in that? Second. Those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 One last thing. Uh, we did have a an employee uh, give her notice yesterday for a better opportunity. Uh, Becky, so Becky, Rebecca, um, Becky, she works in the fire marshal building office a little bit and in the assessor's office. Okay. She's been going to school to get her assessor's license to be certified. And she, you know, there's not a lot of opportunity here at the moment. And she got a job as a, an assessor. In a, in a town. It's what she's been, you know, I saw her today, congratulated her. It's been what she's been working hard towards. She passed all the tests and uh, she will now be, she didn't tell me what town, it won't be hard to find out. I asked her. And she was just like, I'd rather not say, fine. Um, I'm sure we'll figure it out. But uh, assessors are, there's a need for them, assistant assessors and assessors. There's a shortage, there's a shortage of, as I've said to you before, building officials, fire marshal, and even assessors. So um, good opportunity for her. She's moved on. We've advertised the job both internally and externally. We have to adver advertise internally for 30 hours, uh, um, geez, internally for union members. And then, uh, but we, since we're, we have a pretty good sense for who might want to take it internally. We're not sure we're going to get a lot of takers. So we do it on a parallel track. Obviously, if we have a qualified internal person, that person will get the job. Um, but we, we were advertising in both ways. Um, one other thing we are getting, we have two, I think, pretty viable applications. We have a, an opening for a maintainer two. Larry's been without one guy, uh, operating with one guy less. Uh, it seems like that 
we've gotten better applications and this is the third time we've gone out for it. Mm -hmm. We have some a couple new guys and they both look promising. Um, so Larry's pretty happy about that. I'm interviewing one of them tomorrow at 1130, just meeting him for the first time. Um, you know, we'll see how the job market changes over the course of the next year, you know, um, but Connecticut's economy seems to be doing all right. Anyway, um, with that, uh, I guess we'll suspend the meeting until for 20 minutes until five o'clock. And uh, sounds good. So, oh.